Yeah, so why don't we start where we were just starting to discuss Rust, and then you can like staple them together with that file. Go, Tyler, go, Rust. So so Rust, you know, you would think that the armorer Hannah Gutierrez in that particular movie, she would have been the last one to have the weapon before she handed it to the actor. Right. And from everything that I've heard, she wasn't... Like or she checked it and set it back down, and then he picked it up. Or I I don't know the whole entire thing. Well, the point well, I was I was going to make before I accidentally knocked the cable out and killed the recording <laughs> was because of the the Jason Lee's death. A lot of Brandon s- Lee, Brandon Lee, <laughs> Jason Lee, <laughs> Brandon Lee. Because that was honestly on an accident. Brandon Lee's death. A lot of safety. A lot of safety protocols were put in place. One, there's a case. And the gun, take the case out. The armor is the only one that touches it. Once the armor touches it, no one else touches it until the actors do it. Two, nowadays with gun ass, with, with, uh, I'll go back to the Brandon Lee thing here in a second. Nowadays with CGI, uh, uh, muzzle flash assets, um, John Wick, you never see an actual gun. It's all fake. Mu- There's no actual guns. There's recoil on that stuff. They don't fire. It's all fake. unless it has right. to be like a close-up so, thing. They use like a block of plastic, right? Pr- pretty much. Now, yeah. So, like Brandon Lee, he died from a blank. Um, it was a malfunctioning blank because blanks still have like well, stuff that come out of them. So, so, a sh- so sort of, sort of. I'll, I'll get to that. Hang on a second. Sort of. Uh, anyway, so if you ever see a movie and the and the actor's fingers on the trigger. Uh, and they're walking around, and their fingers on the trigger. That is a fake gun. That's a plastic gun. That's a non-firing weapon. Okay. If you see a scene where the actor's hand is outside of the 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 trigger hold, that's probably most likely a actual firing weapon. I would hope to God there's not actual bullets in it. But that might be the one thing that I'm still so, sort of fucking worrying about. But why was there even real fucking ammo? Well, that's the thing is that. Um, that wasn't real ammo. At least not when Brandon Lee died. Right. Um, when right. Brandon Lee died, it was a blank that malfunctioned. And blanks can still be dangerous just at a very, very short range, and they're much less likely to be dangerous because of like the gunpowder interaction is still right. a thing. Uh, we had we were talking about doing an active shooter training which used blank weapons, and that was a concern that was brought up. Like blank weapons are not safe weapons, so it's very possible that. Alec Baldwin had a weapon with a blank in it, and it was a malfunctioning blank ammunition. So, the, the thing. So the thing with uh, what's his name? Brandon. <laughs> I, now all I can think of is Jason. The weapon had fired blanks earlier in the day. Okay. Then it it had it it uh, the bullet was checked. The blank fired correctly, but because of earlier in the day, there was still shrapnel in it. And just like Daniel said, you're still pushing out gas, and there's still an explosion. So there was bullet fragments left over from when they fired real bullets earlier well, in the day. Well, real blank firing guns. They didn't clean the barrel out. Okay. Yeah, it was a piece of shrapnel from a blank cartridge that was used earlier that which, had gotten... Which is basically what a bullet is, is just shrapnel. Right. So... Okay. So the rule, so the safety protocol set up now is if they're using actual blank firing weapons, which uh, I I thought CGI assets pretty much wiped that out, but apparently not. Uh, the armor takes the gun in a case, once sets it down, opens it up. He takes, say it's a six shooter. I think that's what it was on Rust. I, uh-huh. I'm not sure. Say it's a six shooter. The armor is supposed to pull the drum out, spin it around. The director. And the act and all actors involved, everyone involved is to look down the barrel, make certain there's nothing in it. Look in the, uh, what's it called, the drum chamber. Yeah. Uh, the armor then sets it back in the case, locks the case. Then they set the shot up. If they are using blanks, they load the gun up with the blank. They the armor is to show the director and the actor, hey, I am putting. One, however many, uh, blank load one's going in, blank load two, blah, blah, blah. Puts the drum back in, and then uh, they call hot set, which means no more fucking around. 
There is a live ammunition on set. Hands the gun to the actor. The actor is not to put their finger on the trigger. Until told to. Until told to. He is to point it down. This is why making action movies isn't as fun as it looks. But, uh, And then everyone gets in their shot. Everyone's set up. It's a hot set. No more fucking around. No more joking around. Uh, they say action. Actor pulls the trigger up. If if Tyler's to be shot, the gun comes up. The gun is not to be pointed at the actor. And you're supposed to do like a the dire- facsimile of it, or like well, depending like, on if you are a good director, you can put the camera in a certain angle that makes the barrel look like it's shot at Tyler. Yeah, it's all a matter of playing with perspective. You are never to point even a blank firing weapon. You are never to point a barrel at it. And I guess Rust. Supposedly, I, I supposedly I guess there are stories that that this gun that was used, uh, the the crew members in Baldwin were shooting beer cans, supposedly just on break or whatever, and then which you're not supposed to do. So they was fucking around. Yeah, if a gun was used with real ammunition, it's not to be used as a blank firing weapon because of the uh, uh, Brandon Lee. You're not supposed to do that anymore. Uh, supposedly that's what happened. I, I don't actually know. That's the story. Okay, so the thing is, so it's sort of the same thing. Leftover debris from fucking around that previously was not cleared out or, basically made an active or fire. It was that, or I think they accidentally loaded actual ammo in it. Didn't they? That I don't entirely know. Um, like, I, I hadn't heard about him going back to trial for it. Like, I heard he went to trial and they ruled it an accidental death and he was cleared of all culpability. Right. I don't know why they would bring him in a second time. It's for it's for, for a, a different, different different. I mean, obviously he can't be tried for the same thing. But so what what well, happened in Rust is there was the camera, there was the uh, supposedly safety glass, the camera had uh, a, a heavy duty blanket on it, and then the the camera the camera lady, which I'm not sure why she was there. Obviously, I don't work in Hollywood, but I would have thought that would have been dangerous. She, sh- she I would have thought she would just would have set up I the don't, shot. And I, then... so, I yeah. don't think he was supposed to fire. He was, he was, from what I remember reading, he was supposed to pull the gun out of the holster, and then supposed to like, or he was supposed to like spin it around and holster it or something. It was supposed to be like a practice on that. Right, like there was not supposed to be anything in there. Like he wasn't supposed to pull the trigger anyway, and he had done it, and I guess he had pulled the trigger, and so I, and then it ended up going off. But right, it was something similar to, from again what I remember reading is like it had, not it had similar qualities as what you were saying with the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, like the the crew was like from from crew details like the crew was completely overworked like the they had to like travel like hours to the set so like half of them just like slept on set and like no real beds or anything so like the crew was like completely exhausted and they like they were attributing a lot of that to the like because no one can remember really what happened. Right. So the reason why there's so many strikes, like rider strike and crew member strikes, was so like if you're in a movie set, right? Say so, and then you got your guy. I don't mean to pick on Tom, not that he fucking listens, but let's say Tom Cruise, right? So he he's supposed to be on set six a.m. He's he going to film Mission Impossible twenty seven, right? So if it's six a.m., the crew members. Camera, lighting, electrical, grip, everything. If they're shooting at 6 a.m., you guys have to be there at 1 a.m. to make sure that it's ready to, when he walks on set, it is ready to go. And I'm not picking on Tom. It could be anyone. As soon as the actors, as soon as the actors are on set, you got to be ready to go. So 6 a.m., you film all the way to midnight that night. You can't just go home. You have to now strike the set. Electrical's got to be taken down. Lighting's got to be taken down. Set's got to be taken down. Props got to be taken down. And then... You got to be start right back up the next day at six a.m. So it means you got to be back. I mean set. one a.m. No, Tom. They're gonna start filming at six a.m. Yeah, so but you said if Tom's there at six, they have to be there at one. That's right. One that's the point saying. he's trying to get to. So that's why a lot of these union, rightfully so, because everyone's like, "Oh, you're making movies. What are you complaining about?" Well, these guys got it easy, not the fucking people that make these guys look good. So they, 
in say the hotel, say they're shooting in a desert, Mission Impossible 27 is in a desert, the hotel's two hours away. If you got to be back in in 45 minutes, you're not going to go, you're going to sleep in a fucking trailer. Or you're just going to collapse wherever you can collapse for 45 minutes. So, yeah, I that's probably what most likely is what happened. Yeah, so I'm reading, read or just a moment ago, apparently a live ammunition round got mixed in with blanks somehow. Which, mm. yeah, I would never, never. Yeah, why do you even have live rounds there? Shouldn't, like, yeah, why exactly. are they present? Should never even been on set. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, moving on real quick. Even though, uh, hope to God this is going to go through. If not, I'll put it on for some. Put it on some. Yeah, throw uh, another technical difficulties one. Uh, so I want to talk about a few a few things. Um, uh, people getting hung on accident. Infamously, Michael Brendan J. Fraser. Brendan Fraser in the Mummy got hung. Have you seen that movie? I, I mean, yes, but I didn't know he got hung in it. Mm-hmm. The very the very yeah. first one. Yeah, the, like, what happened there? Well, so he was in the prison, right? And they were going to hang him, and the first one didn't look good. And so uh, they ended up doing a second. It's always a fucking second take. They did a second take, and they're like, "Man, he's really acting well, good." He was fucking getting hung for yeah, real. Yeah. So his yeah. safety features weren't working. I would assume so. That's probably what happened. Mm. Uh, same thing with Michael J. Fox in Back to the Future Three. They're like, oh. "Wow, he's acting really well." He was fucking getting hung for real. Uh, I don't know. Have you seen the movie Sinister? I know these two haven't, but have you seen the movie Sinister? Mm, I think so. With Ethan Hawke about the film canisters. Oh you, yes, uh huh. Do you remember when they when the family's in the tree and they're all and the tree gets cut and they all get hung? Mm-hmm. Uh, first take, uh, they all got hung for real. Oh shit! Yeah, they had to they had to run in and just snap all the ropes really quick. That stunt coordinator got fired. Good. Yeah. Uh, that source of that story is uh, the audio commentary. The director was pissed because he he takes his movies uh he takes uh safety on his movies really serious because he does a lot of kind of dangerous stuff like that so he was pissed that that happened uh you know because that was kids too right they were why well, they were kid. Ca- the characters were kids i don't know if the actual actors were kids i'm sure they were probably at least 18 all right so i think if i was a director like knowing that this is even possible with this with the safety coordinator I'm creating a hand signal because in the event that like you are being hung, you can't really speak. And the whole point is to make it believable, right? For the movie, I would create like a hand signal, like a tap out or like a, a do like the, a, like a, do the, a, do, do, do something. The okay. Because yeah, yeah, I'm good. The one thing you're yeah. not going to do like, Oh wow. He's really acting. No, do the Oh yeah. Okay. Fuck. He's not okay. <laughs> right. Like come up with some sort of hand signal. To be like, no, shit gone south, come help me, you know. Yeah, well, as far I, as the hand signal thing goes in Sinister, their hands were tied to behind their back. Well, I get that, but right. you can shoot it in such a way that, like, you right. can make it look like they're tied without actually being tied. Go ahead. What? Like, like you can in movies, instead yeah. of having somebody just taped to a chair for 27 fucking hours. Right. Or you have someone who's off camera standing behind them who can see their hands, you know. Okay, next. Yeah, I, th- I think uh, I think a lot of lot of so I think the 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 stunt thing is like there's a harness. If you take your shirt off, there's a harness, and then there's a big steel rod that goes up your back and the back of your neck. It's like a hook. So when you put the noose on, you're supposed to tie the the noose is to go through the hook. So theoretically, your harness, your chest takes all the the lifting. But uh, I know I don't know what happened in Brendan Fraser's case. I do know in the Michael J. Fox case, due to Zemeckis, it it slipped through the it slipped through the hook and literally became an actual noose. So I I don't think they really do hangs anymore because it it happens to it happens to way for, too often for comfort. Right. Uh, real quick, other things we want to talk about just. Part of this curse movies where films where actors died. We talked about Brandon Lee. Wait a minute. So I just I just kind of put it together. We're talking about cursed movies and and productions, <laughs> oh, and God. we may have lost the entire first half of this episode, first oh, three yeah. quarters of this episode. <laughs> what was that? What you mean? What was what that? What was that noise you just? Made? I didn't do anything. Oh okay. Yeah, uh, stop being crazy, Adam. Yeah, I didn't hear anything. What's uh, so wrong we, with you? We talked about I the crow. I feel like we've been in this room for 27 hours. We talked We, we talked about the crow and Jason, uh, Brandon Lee. God damn it. 
the Imaginarium maybe, maybe. of Dr. Parnassus. Uh, Heath Ledger passed away. Mm. So the role was completed by three actors, Johnny Depp, Jude Law, and Colin Farrell. That I is know, a trippy movie. You I know seen Tyler's it? seen it. Does, mm-hmm. it. does it make sense within the movie, or is it just like... You have to know that... that that uh, what's his face Heath Ledger died to know why he changed his face or is it just no I mean they kind of they they explain it away I would have liked to have known what the original story was so clear they they filmed all of Heath so there's there's the real world and there's where you go inside this imaginarium type place where reality doesn't matter and every time he steps inside his face changes and it it makes sense for the story, but you're kind of like, oh, okay, like it makes way more sense putting it together that okay, that's that's why they changed it. But I would have liked to have known what the original plot was when he went inside. He gets hung in that movie. Does he? Yeah. I don't think anything bad happens. But yeah, okay. Well, that's the thing because part of the plot line is he's done this multiple times faked himself dying from getting hung by putting something in his windpipe to keep his throat from closing. An actual huh. windpipe. Yeah. He puts a windpipe in his windpipe and that's yeah. what keeps it from being crushed. And the trick is he loses that windpipe because somebody grifts it off him. Gotcha. Alright. Uh, Game of Death. We talked about Bruce Lee's passing. Uh, the final film, Game of Death, wasn't was incomplete. Um, so they used stock footage from Enter the Dragon to finish the movie. Uh, supposedly, it, that's even, the one where he's going up the tower, right? That's the one with the yellow suit, the famous yellow suit. I think it? so. Yeah. So what actually ended up killing Bruce Lee? Because that that I don't know. I just know he died on set he's from complications. Well, no, he went he went to the hospital in a coma, right? And he never woke up. Yeah, it was something to do with like they may may I don't I don't know. Like I like I know he had, like broken his back during. Enter the Dragon? Mark of the Dragon? Uh, One of the dragon moves. I think uh, he broke his back. and like, Double double dragon. Double dragon. Um, and... <laughs> what? Uh, like, Great. Had, <laughs> like, had a lot of, like, pain associated with that. And I was thinking that it was, like, some sort of complication from painkillers, but I don't think it was abuse. I think it was just, like, something along those lines, but I've never been 100% sure on that one. Supposedly the fans don't... They they appreciate that the film was finally done, but it's it it's not good. Yeah, I can imagine that. Um, he is found unconscious. He was found dead on arrival to hospital for due to cerebral edema or swelling of the brain. Through several theories that merged over the years, it was a drug complication. Okay, that's where I'm getting the the yeah medicine complication. Okay. Uh, Shrek. All the dialogue was originally recorded by Chris Farley. Um, and after his passing, they did uh, Mike Myers. They've recently found the like the test footage yeah. with Chris Farley's voice, and everyone's like, it, "It's much better the way that it well, was." So, if they had all of it shot already, why did they recast him? Well, they didn't have it all shot. Oh, they okay. had like ninety nine percent done, and there's like a few things where they was I think. They was going to ask. Uh, they wanted Mike Myers to come in and like try and mimic his voice and finish it off. And, and he's like, "No, I don't want to do that." He but then, like, so they redid all that recording. Then they did it all recording of Mike Myers in his normal voice, and Mike's like, hey, "Can I kind of try some?" So then they re-recorded the whole fucking movie with the uh, was it Irish, uh, Scottish, Scottish, Scottish accent. Uh, I don't know if this counts as. I guess this, this would be almost cursed. Uh, Toy Story Two. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I don't so, know. So, Toy Story 2 was, like, completely done, and I guess someone at Pixar accidentally deleted the entire thing, but luckily there was someone that was working on it on from home. Hot, brought it home, yeah. And, like, okay. they brought it home, and, like, they saved it. So, like, I guess that would be, like, semi-cursed. So, we yeah, were, so we were going to fire you for bringing that home. We told yeah. you not to bring it home, but you yeah. know what? You saved our ass. Yeah, you're, like, you're, you're still fired, though. Yeah, yeah like, <laughs> he had character models for the movie at home so they lost everything they did with them but they didn't have to make the character Mario again and that was like 20% of what you needed to make the movie is that one any good mm-hmm. though oh yeah it's one of the best ones is that the best one I honestly I'm asking I don't know I, I've seen the first one a million times that I don't like watching anymore and I know I've seen the second one but I can't 
recall fucking things. The second one, that's the one with... Um, you get Woody's origin story. Yeah, where you get like the, the prospector and mm-hmm. that's got the girl cowboy in it. Jesse. Mm-hmm. Jesse, yeah. Well, Wh- which it, one's the Hitler burning him in a Holocaust one? The third that one. was the third one. Third one. But, but the, the, it goes to show how good it was because it went straight to VHS, but it was so good they released it in theaters later. Oh, I believe you. Yeah, so it's like the opposite of the Disney straight to uh, VHS. So the last thing is before we end this episode, which may is going to be a short one. What are your thoughts on on deep with deep fakes being super popular now? What are your thoughts on deep faking a dead celebrity or say a celebrity gets hurt and Tom Cruise gets hurt doing a stunt? And they're like, oh, we got like twenty percent more stuff. What do you think? Is if it, the guy's alive and he okay's it? I think I'm fine with it. Like I can't do this. I'm not. I would, it's going to be three years before I'm able to do this. UK deep fake me. If it's a guy that just passed, kind of let him live, dude. Well, I think it kind of matters, like what the estate thinks about it. Like you definitely have to get permission from the estate, because like the one that I think about is Spartacus from Stars. Um, the first season of Spartacus was absolutely brilliant. It was fantastic. And then the actor uh, got diagnosed with skin cancer. Right. Um, so they shot season two, which was a prequel season, because they could shoot it without him. So they did that. And then weeks before season three started, the dude died. And they had to they recast him, right? And that's they just didn't have any other option. And I, I don't know if that's the right thing to do, given... Like, there are plenty of aspiring out actors out there. Um, I definitely think you need the estate permission. I would say it would have to be used very sparingly. And you would have to use it, like, with with some sort of extraneous circumstances. Like, in the event of, like, say, Chadwick Boseman, who passed away right. uh, from complications of cancer. I think the movie that we got that was Black Panther 2 was more genuine and more heartfelt to his passing than if they CGI'd him into the the movie and made a full Black Panther 2 with Chadwick Boseman, you know? Even if the the state did sign off on it. So I think it'd be one of those things where it would have to be the movie is almost done. Dude has serious problems and we can't complete it and like the movie's gonna be scrapped for whatever reason like i think then maybe you can explain it or justify it but it is such a messy topic when you're talking about like ai generated faces and stuff so what do you think about the the luke skywalker in the mandalorian no they should they i mean you have an actor the the body of an actor portraying him just not his face they're making a Mark Hamill mask, basically. So should they have just cast someone that looks as close to young Mark Hamill? Or Well, I had assumed, and I guess I don't know for sure, but I had assumed that was Mark Hamill wearing a green screen face. No, it was an, it was an actor. Oh, okay. Yeah. Did so... they get his permission? Oh, I, I would 100% sure they had to. Yeah, like, if it's, like, it's the consent thing for me. Well, I don't think it's... I mean, consent's definitely a big part of that. Um, To me, it's... If you want to use Mark Hamill, then you should fucking use Mark Hamill. Especially if he's around. It'd be a different story if Mark Hamill was dead and the estate approved it. I think in that instance, I would recast him. Um, And I legitimately thought in that scene that was Mark Hamill wearing a green screen face and that they put his young face on top of it or or deep faked a young face on top of him. Because that's what they essentially did in Tron Legacy, didn't they? Like, they had the original actor basically CGI'd to hell, but it was him. Well, that's that's de-aging. That's a a different... Yeah, that's what I thought they did. No. Okay. So, I I don't... take, Take the legal matters out of the argument. I'm not sure where I stand. Because there's definitely legal issues, but let's just speak from an artistic point of view. I'm not sure where I stand because let's say... Like Robert Downey Jr. right as Iron Man. Let's say we love him or hate him or whatever. Love those movies, hate those movies, whatever. He's got he Robert Downey Jr. 
yes, a ton of people can do sarcastic wit and snappy dialogue, but can can his his timing be emulated? Like, yeah, people can do his lines, maybe funnier, but like he's only Robert Downey Jr. can do like the way he spins his head and he's got minute movements of his eyebrows that like and you you could apply this to anyone. I just picked Robert Downey. You could literally apply this to anyone. Right. I, I just picked to so like I, I don't I don't have any I don't know where I stand. I just I I think it, it sucks if like because you man we really want let's say Robert Downey Jr. dies and we knew Iron Man like we really want him in there but can can you deep fake him well because an actor an actor can bounce off of something that that a, a, a as as good as a computer technician is can't bounce off of it the way Robert Downey Jr. Can. So I'll tell you the only time I think it's appropriate. And the only time that I can think of that where like something like that was done well, and that was uh, Ghostbusters Afterlife, with what they did with Harold Ramis. Right. That was respectful. It was done tastefully. Um, it was done appropriately. Um, and it was used to say goodbye to someone that the franchise never had the opportunity to say goodbye to. Um, so, like, if that's the intent, I'm okay with that. Um, like in Wakanda Forever, um, I don't think you ever actually see Chadwick Boseman in Wakanda Forever. But if they had done like a hologram or like uh, an AI version of his voice speaking one final goodbye, or um, like you saw some artificially created pictures or something like that, then then maybe that's appropriate. Um, but overall, I think um, I agree with Cody for the most part, which is, you know, I'm I'm sorry for the unfortunate passing. Um, say goodbye and let's give some of these other actors a chance to do their thing, yeah. you know. And like, don't get me wrong. I'll get you wrong if I want to. <laughs> you would love to see him again. and But that's nostalgia talking. Nostalgia is great and wonder and all that, but it... That's part of our current problem as it is. We keep looking back to the past, I think, too often. We're not coming up with newer ideas. We're just going with what works, and that's just the next level of it. Well, and I should clarify that that my opinion on that is um, solely for commercial sake. Um, because I feel differently about, what was it, um, what Kanye had AI created for what her name kardashian's dad for as a gift or something like that you guys know what i'm talking about yeah I, I like think... he created like so i and i i apologize because i don't know oh, which yeah. actors are married to each other but i think it's kanye west and one of the kardashian kim, girls kim, they were, yeah. kim kardashian were kim, married with okay, robert kim, kardashian yeah Cause like he passed away yeah because kanye west created an ai hologram or CGI of her dad and had an AI specialist put his voice together and was able to create this meaningful message. All I'm I, thinking is I, he's saying Kanye's the fucking coolest. No, all I can no. think all I can think of and I'm not trying to laugh is the Marlon Brando Jorah from, from Superman. <laughs> That's all I'm thinking of. Right. So like I think in those kind of situations where like it's As a obviously of right. Well, it's, it's also for private use, you know. Like, he's not going to go out and sell it. This is a, an artist creating digital art, and I think that is entirely acceptable for you to use that commercially as an artist. Now, I don't think I, my opinion changes when you talk about using it commercially to create media. You know, um, if you are creating something for someone to, I guess to consume versus like a specialized personalized project you know the only thing i really know is that so disney released like an eight minute short where it's like almost all of their characters yeah, yeah. and you know they all come out of they get like as many of you know they steal snippets of from all these movies well they had robin williams as the genie and people were all throwing a fit, and they're like, well, they're using AI, and the family's like, no, one, we gave our permission, and two, they're using some of the 
500 hours of unused footage from all of his movies. I mean, that's that's the only real thing that I know about uh, AI and all that stuff. I know that's a huge issue, you know, like all the extras being, you know, if I think it's like if you're an extra and like your likeness has been filmed, then they can use. I thought that was something they were trying to do. Like they were, you can they can use your likeness. Yeah, I mean, for read, read your contracts for those kind of things, you know. Yeah, and I, I think that's acceptable. Even if they had used AI to recreate Robin Williams with the family's permission, and it's just a little snippet cameo, I mm-hmm. think that's acceptable. I think that's fine. It's not like they're making Aladdin for now, starring the AI voice of Robin Williams. Right. Exactly. Like that. Like I think that's like a hard line needs to be linked because I don't want to go see Mrs. Doubtfire two now starring. The cruise AI construct of our maid, Robin Williams. Miss Doubtfire 2, Cruise Control. I thought you said Miss Doubtfire 2, Bruce Campbell. Right. Oh, like, yeah. I'd say that. Yeah. Um, and I had another Secret thing of I was going to say about that. I didn't. The talk about the... Are you pausing for dramatic effect? No, I, no. I forgot what I was going to say. Did I mess you up? No, yes, they you did, did talk about Mrs. Doubtfire. Gotcha. Like, it's just... Hello. And there's people's legitimate fears about AI being used to take jobs. Like, to what degree it'll ever happen is yet to be determined yet. But if you could <laughs> deep fake oh. everything, what's the point of giving a new actor a chance when you have all these tried true presidents that are known throughout history? I wish an AI would take my job. <laughs> right. And, and I realized what I was going to say when we were talking about, like, the the. Mrs. Doubtfire being recreated, or whatever. It's the movie that was they were trying to do with James Dean. Uh, they were trying to make like Rebel Without a Cause two oh, with yeah. all that James fucking, like AI James Dean. That went down. They're not even doing that no more. Are they? I don't. I. Mm. It's been in development hell for the last. Yeah, I don't. So I don't long. Think but think it's going anywhere. Yeah. Yeah, it's just I don't know. Like it's sorry. It's it's messy. It's real messy until the rules are further defined. I think it just needs to be left alone. Until our AI overlords come and tell us exactly what they're supposed to do. Right. All right. Speaking Get of, to the chopper. <laughs> speaking of telling you exactly what to do, you've been listening to The Ridge a podcast. Ho- hopefully the whole episode. <laughs> right. Hopefully a whole It'll episode t- of you, The Ridge. Let's be honest. Not. You'll put it up in two fucking parts. <laughs> He, I, hey, he, he edited the disclaimer in. I did. Yeah, yeah, fuck yeah, you, the, dude. The, really? The, yeah, on our sex podcast. Oh. He, he edited the disclaimer in. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, that sounded really good, too. I was, like, I, sometimes I just listen to the disclaimer. Oh. I won't. So whoever, that AI voice that we got for the disclaimer has a real sexy voice. Thank you. Yeah. Anyway, so you've been listening to good. hopefully the Ridge and not the Technical Difficulties podcast. Uh, be, we'll find out. The, we'll find the, out here in a couple of weeks which one which one it'll be. Ridge. And if we have lost this episode, we promise we pr- might not do a, a repeat ooh, of it. Ooh, I right. got an idea. If we lost this episode, I just want to have Adam sitting there and doing all all the parts for everybody. <laughs> Adam so, would read a line and be like, oh my god, that's amazing. And then Daniel does the calculations and find out it's less than a percent of efficiency. And then Tyler quits back and like, but in this timeline... Oh yeah, I'm the, there's no way I'm going to be able to recreate oh, fuck. that map. That was, the, that was the only compliment you gave me on a podcast too. <laughs> that was, yeah, that, that was actually oh. funny, yeah. Alright, anyway, so you've been listening to The Ridge or Technical Difficulties, we'll find out, a uh, podcast by Damage Control Podcasting. Uh, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. These are things that you should be doing right now. And uh, you can find out new episodes every uh, Monday on YouTube, SoundCloud, and Apple Podcasting. Uh, make sure you check out our meager uh, social media presence. Meager. Oh. Meager. Uh, at uh, Facebook, on Instagram, and on Twitter. And uh, again, if you haven't liked, comment, and subscribed, are you Is really a Twitter? fan? Is it Twitter again? Yeah. Oh, no, it's, it's still X. It's oh, still okay. X. Yeah, but you're we right. Don't know I should how be. Long it's gonna be I, I should be saying X. Oh no, I'm just asking. No, that's fair. I find it funny that we were talking about AI when like 90 percent of everyone that listens to it is probably a bot. <laughs> that is true. Anyone who is not Cody's mom is a bot. That's that's for true. All right. So thank you so much for listening. Adam, All right. push the button.